Right, so today we're going to go over how to wire a Switchcraft or Les Paul three-way toggle switch um, a la Gibson. So that would be using braided wire. Um, just to show you what we've got, we've got, the, we've got a Switchcraft toggle switch. Now these are top of the range. This is actually the short frame version, uh, whereas Gibson would probably use the long frame version for certainly in the Les Paul. But the principle is exactly the same, so we'll be using that. We've got, uh, you're going to need three and a half to four feet of braided uh, guitar wire. Um, for those of you that don't know, braided guitar wire is essentially two wires and one. So you've got the outer braid, which is the ground. And underneath you've got the black cloth wire, which is the, the hot. So you need three and a half to four feet of that. Uh, as usual with our videos, we've got uh, two sizes of heat shrink tubing. Um, this isn't, um, this is optional, you don't need it if you don't want it, um, but we'll show you what that's for later in the video, and uh, you'll see why we love to use it so much. Um, I've also got here some tinned copper wire. Uh, you don't need, it doesn't have to be tinned copper by any means. Um, there you go. Tinned copper. But you do need uh, a bare ground wire of sorts, um, so we've got that. Uh, just to show you the setup we've got here, we've got the soldering station. Um, recently come across or started to use brass shavings as opposed to a damp sponge. Um, always use a damp sponge, but then I read about using these. Um, never going to go back. I think they're brilliant. Clean your tip a lot more effectively whilst uh, not lowering the temperature of your solder tip, which a damp sponge can do. No biggie, but um, yeah, just thought I'd point that out there. Uh, and obviously for the solder, um, for all my own personal projects I do like to use the tin lead solder but obviously for uh, commercial reasons and regulations I, I have to use lead free. So with that in mind, uh, if you do go down the lead free route, go for the added silver. A um, lot easier to work with. And uh, some wire cutters. Pretty self explanatory. So uh, right then, let's dive in shall we? Okay, so moving on, a uh, little bit of prep work is required. You want to cut your braided wire into three individual lengths. So the first two lengths, you want two equal lengths at about 45 centimeters. These will be your inputs to each volume control. And you want a slightly longer wire, go for 51 centimeters or so. It doesn't need to be much longer to be fair which is what will go all the way out to the jack. So uh, as your wire is prepared, obviously you also need to know exactly what each lug on the Switchcraft switch does. Now the first thing to note is each lug does come pre-tinned from the factory, which is pretty handy actually in terms of making soldering a lot easier. Um, but just to show you what each lug does here, the fat lug here, the little chunky one, that's the ground. The two lugs either side are the inputs to the volume controls, that's these two here. So you've got your ground, input to volume, input to volume, and on the other side, these two here are the output to the jack. So output, volume, volume, ground in the middle. Okay, so obviously you don't want to do this on the inside of your Les Paul. Uh, the control cavity for the toggle switch is pretty small to say the least. So either do it on a flat surface or a workbench or better yet, get yourself a bit of cardboard or plywood, drill a hole in the middle, it needs to be 12, 12 millimeters across, um, and load the toggle switch on the inside. So it just gives yourself a stable flat platform like so. And the very first thing we're going to do is using the ground wire we showed earlier, take a snippet, it's about five centimeters, and feed that through the ground lug. That's the big fat lug we showed you earlier. And you're going to solder that in place. Um, 
Now, I mean, obviously that lug's a little bit thicker than the others, so it does take a bit more heat than normal. That's my solder. But we'll give it a go. So bring it closer there, you'll see that ground lug in the middle has the bare wire solder to it. Now the next step, using your three braided wires, you want to take the two identical lengths and these are going to be going to the volume controls. So with each wire, pull the braid back uh, literally about two to three centimetres, make it snug, and again, solder the wires to these two lugs here on the switch, the input to the bottom. Okay, let's, let's get Beautiful. And repeat the exact same process with the other input to the volume lug. So pull back the braid. couple of centimetres, feed it through, and solder. Oops, beautiful. And the final wire, this is the longer wire you cut earlier, which is going to the, the jack socket. Obviously gets connected to these two here. Now these two, if you're using the short frame toggle switch, they will be bent together already, because you need to put the wire going through both legs. So this time you pull the braid back a little bit further because it is going to be going across from here in line with the other three that way. So we'll just put that through. Get the solder. Let it cool naturally, don't blow on it. It just takes uh, two, three seconds. So pretty much that's nearly all the wiring done. So you want to pull these three in the same direction. Now this is where, if you do choose to use it, the smaller diameter of heat shrink tubing does come in hand. Simply because all I like to do is cut it up into centimetre sizes or so. And just cover these lugs. Just cover the joints of all three wires. Just like that. 
Same on this one. And finally, the background. You should be able to wedge it on if you've got the right size. So obviously take your lighter and heat that tubing down. Right, so as you can see, of the, using a heat gun or a lighter, the rubber tubing has been shrunk around every joint, so that's nice and snug. Just gives it a bit more insulation and protection um, from potentially causing a short by coming into contact with something else. Now the final step, electronically anyway, is using the ground wire we put down earlier, the very first wire. This wire here gets wrapped around, making sure of course that these three wires are all going in the same direction. Nice and tight, snug, not too tight obviously. Um, and wrap this ground wire around all three. Just like that. And of course, solder it down. And that effectively grounds all three wires. So that when you connect into the jack or the volume pots, you obviously have to ground the outer braid to the back of the pot or the jack, and the inner wire goes to the the lugs or the uh, hot lug on the jack. So uh, yeah, Just heat that up a bit. Nice. That's how you wire a switchcraft three way double switch Gibson style using the braided guitar wire. The final step, should you choose to do it, is to use the heat shrink rubber tubing, which uh, you simply use to cover all three wires, run it up the length of the wire. Uh, and all that does, to be honest, um, the only reason I do it. Is because if you're putting three braided wires through a Les Paul body and then your pickups are also braided wires, uh, it can be a right fiddle getting all five wires through to the, the control cavity. Um, so at least by covering them with rubber tubing, it just makes it a lot easier. I mean, three of them are instantly tied together, so it makes it a lot easier to get those three through. So that's all done. I mean, like I said, the heat shrink tubing is optional, it just makes it a lot easier getting all the wires through. So, uh, as you can see, everything's nice and neat and going in the same direction. And your three wires here go to the jack and the volume pots, respectively. So, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a couple of things there if you didn't already know, and we'll see you next time.